following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Blowing out of the backfield, exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, Jesse Holly, and Shannon Gross. Shannon Jazz. You're looking at a live shot. Well, you're not looking at a live shot. You're looking at us <laughs> because Jazz usually takes us to a live shot in Tostitos Plaza, but not today. We don't oh, get that there beautiful. Is. Oh, there's shot. a beautiful shot. Look at that beautiful thing. At the Sorry Forest that, Center Sorry and that. Tostitos Championship Plaza here at the Star in Frisco, home of the Dallas Cowboys. I want to say what's up, what's up right now to Cowboy Nation. And you are now rocking with the best. I'm Heckma Harrison. Joined by my usual suspect, my guy, the <laughs> Emmy nominated. Ah. Man, y'all did a good job. I'm gonna get to that. But Fresh formal, for, no, always, no, always. Is, is, I'm, I'm, I'm due for one. Always Third interrupting day. the open. Sorry. Uh, my guy, <laughs> former wide receiver Jesse Holly, and also in the studio with us today, the birthday boy. Someone, gonna, someone yeah. that Jesse always refers to as Zeus. I never refer to him. Super ever. Bowl champion. Zeus. Isaiah no. Standback. Happy birthday. Hey, hey, to hey, you. hey, uh, hey. Uh, uh, happy birthday. Y'all get it off. Yeah. Appreciate you. Dun, happy birthday. Yeah. Dear Zeus. Zeus. Happy birthday to you. It did do like they do in the in the in the club. Happy birthday to you. Hey, and in and in parts unknown that Mr. Nate, the three-time Super Bowl champion, right guard of the Dallas Cowboys, Mr. Nate Newton. Nate, what's going on, man? Hey, how you fellas doing, man? What's up, Nate Dog? You know what it is, man. Everybody, everybody is good up in here, man. And I want to say that the, the nickname Zeus was given to Isaiah by Mr. Brad Sham. Well, it is his birthday also. So two goats have a yeah. birthday on the same we, day. We realized that the other night. I gave Brad a ride back to the hotel because he wasn't on the charter. And we're riding in the car and we're walking back up to the hotel. And somehow it came up. He was like, wait, when's your birthday? And we figured out that at that moment, I said, Brad. We've known each other for all these years, and we just figuring out that we have the same exact birthday. <laughs> no, I got a funny Brad, Brad, Brad Sham story. So back when you guys were at training camp in San Antonio, you know, I saw Brad, and I'm like, he's walking past. I didn't want to be like fanboy or say anything, but he walks up. He's like, what's up, Heckman? And I go, oh, yeah. oh, my God, you know my name. You know what he says? That's your name, isn't it? It just walks off. He sunned me. Like, <laughs> so I picked my face. Hey, I picked my face up. <laughs> I picked my face up. I was like, I if I if I would get done like that by anybody, let it be Brad Sham. But happy birthday, Mr. Sham. Uh always, always wonderful to have a conversation with a living legend doing his thing. But Nate, as we do always on for me, I want to make sure I check in with y'all, man, to see how are your mentals, brother? How are y'all doing? Isaiah, I will start with you. How are you today? I'm copacetic, man. I'm blessed to, <laughs> blessed to be here. I'm blessed to have another year underneath my belt. And I'm blessed to be with you, brothers, man. You know, oh. Everybody doesn't get to sit in the studio at the star nah. talking football nah. with his bros. You know, it's, it's not That's a bad dope. deal. What a That's blessing. Dope. Yeah. Jay? I'm good. I'm good right now. I will say this. This morning, I had one of the best cries oh. that I've had. It was so necessary, and I can't tell you what I cried about. You was constipated? I know. I just, I was walking the dogs at like 5.45 this morning, and I had just a good old-fashioned cry session really? walking these dogs. But if after I was done, you felt better. I felt so good. Yeah. Man, who's that? Is it Jimmy V that wrote that book that you got laugh about something, cry about something every day? I just had, this, the, I just had yeah. this wealth of emotion that was just like on me. Yeah. And I just started crying walking the dogs this morning. And after I was done, I was just like, okay, all I'm right. about you. Ah, I was like, I feel so much better. Yeah. So, listen, fellas. Got it out? It's okay to cry. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's okay it to cry. And I just, I feel better. I'm good now. Let it I'm out. Good. Yeah. Nate, what about you, brother? How are you? Man, I'm about 200 miles, a, a little <laughs> bit more east of uh, El Paso. I'm just rolling. I pull it over to the side, man. Uh, you know, it's just. 
to see how you guys doing. One guy over over five thousand years old, a Greek god, and the other guy cried <laughs> all morning long. I, I'm doing great compared to them two guys. You <laughs> somewhere in the middle. You somewhere yeah. in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, me and myself, man, I am terrific, fantastic, man. Can't wait to get this show on. I think we have a great show hmm. uh, planned today. And and look, in case you were under a rock or something, you did not know that the Cowboys had a preseason football game on Saturday. They did. They did, and you were you were a part of it. Yeah. And actually, on the call with Bill Jones and Babe Laufenberg. Uh, man, I think there's a lot of, a lot of opinions uh, that have come from, from that game. But Isaiah, because you were on the call, I'm going to start with you, man. What okay. exactly was your, what, what were your thoughts uh, once the clock hit 0 0 0, zero? It, was, it was a good preseason game. Uh, preseason games, I want to, and, and Nate and I hit it on our on our individual podcast from yesterday. I know, let me tell you something, podcast. But preseason games are meant to work through all those things that they experience in that first game, in terms of rookies making a lot of mistakes, regardless. And I said this yesterday, regardless of where they're drafted, where regardless of their draft status. Preseason games are meant for rookies to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. The second-year players who didn't have a lot of reps last year, preseason games are meant for them to make mistakes because those second-year guys are going to be relied upon to make contributions to this team. So if you're going to make mistakes, get them out the way right now. Get them out the way in game one so that we can actually have the film to go back and review so that Al Harris can give you guys some critiques and give you some techniques so that, you know, Coach Philbin can take care of you on the line and get the red dot and highlight you like this, all right? Those are the things that you want to make sure that you address Look at, he's so that you can right go there. ahead yeah. and take <laughs> And what's up, people? Uh, so that's what preseason games are for. So as, as angry as people are, as disappointed as people are, these are still the times in which you want to hash these things out. With that said, the Dallas Cowboys have some things to work through, and I hope that they take this week and improve upon them substantially, and you don't see those same things that you saw in previous weeks show back up in week two. Big Nate, what'd you come uh, away with? I come away with basically what my man said there, but I want to add this right here. You got shocked and blowed up in Denver, their practice. I'm talking about the offense. Yeah. You got shocked and blowed up in the preseason game. When are you going to pick up your tempo? Mm. Two things I'm going to keep talking about for our offense especially is tempo and, a, and some type of consistency. Why does it have to take three series or more, whether it's a practice or a preseason game, before we see some, uh, some, some positive uh, production from our offense? That, that, I know we got one or two new guys. But, but wow, really? Wow, we keep getting blowed up. We keep not. We, we don't play with no tempo. We we have no consistency. Why is that? I mean, that's 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 sad. That's sad. Jesse, <laughs> I saved you for last. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 good. I'm telling you guys, I'm so good. And Isaiah, I think hit it. I think he hit it on the head. My only, I guess, real critique, and, and I'm not here. To, we, can, we can go in individually. Mm -hmm. My only real critique, of course, we're going to talk about the penalties, right? It's, to me, it's not just the penalties. It's who <laughs> is making who, who, who. <laughs> it's who's making yeah. the penalties. Because... Right. In these preseason games, you're going to have players who are trying to vie for a position on this football team. Some will make it, some won't. But the guys who made a bulk of those penalties, you can pretty much put those guys on the roster. Those are guys who are going to be on this roster. Not all of them, but, I mean, it, there's, there's four or five guys who had multiple penalties on this, uh, in this game yes. that's going to be on this roster. So... When you look at what we went through last year as being the most penalized team in the league, what we went through the playoffs, and what we're seeing again. Mm -hmm. And to your point, these are the times where you're supposed to be able to work through stuff. But 
we were working for this. We were working on this. Yeah, out of this. out of context though. That's out of context, right? Until you put it in context, we're based upon last year. Right. When it you, changes the dynamic. You go. Are we working through this? Like, yeah. what 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 is the change that we're seeing in this? That you come out the gate in preseason game one, you got 17, 18 penalties. Right. That's the part where I've I I, I struggle with. 17 accepted penalties. Excuse me, 17 accepted penalties. Yeah. That's the part where I I <laughs> Sorry, I, heck, well, I can't I have nothing. I, have. I I am I am I am a little bit it's a head scratcher to me. But just let me ask you this. So like I I love what you just said there. At the end of the season, if that the season ended and there was a to be continued mm. at the end of that season. Bathroom break. And you start the new season and it's picks up where it left off. Flags everywhere. How much I mean how much of the onus do you now start to say, all right, I'm putting this on coaching, mm. I'm putting this on culture, and I'm just putting this on players? Uh, I, it's going to be on everybody. It's going to be on everybody. Everybody, obviously, you start with the coaches. And I, I'd say <laughs> it kind of reminds me of my, my wife and I and our, our outlook on disciplinary actions in regards to our kids. And, you know, if I say something – the kids tend to do it, you know, and with the wife, and I think this is kind of across the board for most most uh, married couples, the wife will give a little bit more, you know, grace, and, and, and it'll take a little bit longer for the wife to actually try to put her foot down in certain regards, you know, and, and maybe when we say, if you say somebody requires a little a little tap on the butt, right? right? The, the, the Most of the time, the father is kind of going to be the, the enforcer of that immediately, you know, and then the mom will give a couple more chances, and then they'll, all right, hey, hey, listen, you remember what I told you? Your, the response by the players is dictated up based upon the punishment that they're going to face. If the coaches are lenient Oof. on how they discipline them when these things occur, you're more apt to do them because you're able to get away with it more, right? right? However, if you do it and then all of a sudden you see the ramifications of it and you're like, I, I don't want no part of that. Yeah. Right. All of a sudden, you have a game where there's six holding, you know, six penalties, and you come back to practice the next day, and everybody's getting drugged, everybody's getting ran in the ground, everybody's getting, you know, an earful. We don't want that no more. You, no. Right? you get put on blast, you get embarrassed. I'm not fooling with that. I don't want that experience. So what do you do? That's in the back of your head now, or in the fore in front of your head, or in your frontal lobe when you're playing. You're making sure uh, I'm not about to be that guy. You're not about to highlight me on the film. You're not gonna put the red dot around me. So I'm gonna make sure my feet are right. You know, I know Nate wants to talk about you know some of these hand placements and and feet placement and head, all those kind of things. You're gonna make sure that you check yourself because you don't want to deal with the the consequences of not doing it the correct way. So I'm not sure what punishment they have had to face to date, but I would assume and I would like to think that Coach McCarthy, when he was Looney Tunes mad, as I said on the air. Right, head steaming red. Everybody can envision that, right? Head is bubbling. Yeah. That that next day at practice, that there was some form of ramifications that would be imprinted and burnt into their mind. And no, if we decide to do this again, it's going to be a bad day the next time we go to practice. Now, Nate, you, you've talked a lot about continuity of the offensive line and those penalties on, on ball who had the three holding penalties and the rookie at two holding penalties. How much of that did you put on continuity, or are you just saying, look, this is just who these guys are technique-wise at this point, and obviously are still in that development mode, or are you just saying, man, those are just awful penalties by our offensive line? Okay, uh, let me start back, because Jesse brought up something that was so dynamic. Remember last year, all the penalties? Mm -hmm. But do you remember last year, not having the right tempo coming out against the 49ers in our own stadium, yeah. not having the right tempo in, in the middle of the season against Denver, not playing with any continuity, the same holding calls because your head is not in the right place, your foot is not in the right place. Uh, we go, and, and, and this kid, Ball, is his first year, really. This is his other kid's first year. But you have to overemphasize if these kids came out of college with some of these same bad habits, which our first rounder did, you have to overwork him. You have to get almost fined by the league because you would not let him off the field mm -hmm. of working these techniques. You got to be willing to take that chance. 
because if this is what you're going to face in a learning process, because if you led the NCAA and Power 5 football were holding calls, these real silverbacks in this league right here that play with greater technique and greater quickness, what are we going to face during the season if this kid can get on the field? Because right now you've got to get a job to come on the and I understand we got two more preseason games, but right now you cannot take Connor McGovern out the game. Now, Jesse, I want to spin the block on, on that. Uh, as far as you talked about last Friday about toughness, you see that going to the game, not only was, well, I guess what I'm asking you, was the toughness aspect, did they check the box there, or was the, the penalties and everything else just pretty much override, overrid that, and they had no way of making amends? Uh, for what you saw in toughness and physicality? I, I think overall, there was a lot of good stuff that, mm-hmm. that, that We're gonna get to that. was in that football game. Um, they ran the ball uh, efficiently and effectively. But again, when, when, I, when I talk about toughness, there's, it's still to be continued. This is because you're not, you're not going to have a history of not being tough, and then it all of a sudden changes – in a, in a preseason game, they're, they're, and and we talk about not having 18 of the guys who will normally it was 18, 20 guys who would normally be out there right. starting playing mm-hmm. that didn't play. I'm, I'm, I want to see those guys. I want to see those guys mixed with these guys and and see what's going to happen. This week coming up is, a, is another opportunity for them to show self of what they really are when you go up against that Chargers. Mm. Offense and defense, because mm. you will be challenged on both. You talk. You want to talk about a complete roster? Mm. I don't know what the Chargers are going to do this year. I'm not. I'm not casting them in the Super Bowl. Whatever. But on paper, you want to talk about a complete roster from top to bottom, offensively and defensively. <laughs> you get ready to go up against one of the most complete <laughs> rosters in football. Yeah. Offensive line wise, deep. Mm. My don't, lord. Don't go there. Defensive line wise. You're going to have good cornerback play, good linebacker play. Good, good cornerback play? Really, really good. Really, really good cornerback play. Okay. Really, really, really good cornerback play. They won't have Derwin James out there. So that'll take away some of it. I know, but they're, they're – no, no, no. They got some dogs out there. They got some dogs out there. Okay, just making sure. Dogs. Dogs. Urban. D-A-W-G. Urban. Offensively, oh, Trey uh, – Tay, uh, Trayvon Diggs and 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 Jordan, you about to you about to go up and get some a, a route running dude, yeah, and a quarterback who can make every single throw that there is to be made. You're gonna have a good running. Back. So another opportunity for them to show it this week. So the toughness part is, I say to be continued. You gotta still, but again, toughness is not only a physical thing; it's a mental thing. Right. And, and when you go into a game and you have 18 <clears throat> penalties, that shows me technically and mentally that you, you're you not quite there yet. Yeah, and you guys, all three of you have played for some of the league's best coaches. Mm-hmm. And when you when you lead off, and, and Nate's talking about, and, and Isaiah, you're talking about tempo. Those things happen in practice. Yeah. You, oh, wait, what? You mean practice? <laughs> practice. The thing that everyone tells me, we yes. shouldn't even, hey, it's just practice, it's just a preseason. Oh, I'm sorry. But that's what, you, I mean, it does. It, it starts in practice. You practice with tempo from the way, stretching, group, group drills, all of those things. Like, are you saying that at this point, that is the difference between what you're seeing on the field, that there's no sense of urgency there that's giving you the inclination that maybe this is something that is a byproduct of the tempo in practice? I, I, can I say this? Mm-hmm. And you were in New England, mm-hmm. correct? I was in New England. <laughs> One of the things that I've loved about the way New England practices, and you go, you go and be a part of a New England practice. Intentional. You practicing. Yeah. It, it was an eye-opening experience for me when I went to New England. Yeah. And the reason being totally because. Totally different, right? Totally different. Yep. You will compete every single day. <laughs> there is no, and I did not like this, and I get it. I, I get not playing Dak. I get not playing maybe a tyrant because he had a, you know, maybe a Micah. But there was some guy that they didn't play. that I'm saying, what the hell did he accomplish? Who the hell is he that he think that he – he thinks he – you've now caused a guy to think he's arrived. In New England, 
They, nah. And every single day, they would let you know. Bill would be like, oh, we only got one receiver spot open up, fellas. Who going to go get it? We only got – so now he tell it to the DBs. He tell it to the receivers. So now we, we, we inter league, we're we inner room competing <laughs> yeah. while we're competing against the guy next right. to, across from us that are naturally our, our, our competition. When I tell you the levels of practice were so high, were so high and intense. It felt like it was – It felt like yeah. – and you won you – you, you missing practice for, for what? Oh, okay, don't worry. Let him have a better week of practice than you. I promise he's going to play before you. And every week you had to earn your spot on the field. <laughs> I, I saw those, I saw 18 dudes. I'm like, okay, maybe five or six of y'all. But 18? Now you created a culture where these guys think they've arrived. Entitlement. Entitlement. And this is something we've been trying to get out of these dudes. Trump, Patrick Mahomes played <laughs> in the preseason game. Like, where's, it, the, where's the line? Like, like, where, where's the line though? Where, where are we drawing the line at here? Yeah, like, between like, being safe, right, and competing. Nate, Nate dog, what's your, what's your thoughts on yeah, that? Where, where's, the, where's the line? You know, the, the, this is when you when you on opening day ceremony, you tell us you have to develop the young guys because this is the new NFL, and we have to make sure these young guys understand. To me, and to you, and to both you guys. Four years and less is still considered young in this league. Yep. And so I, I'm listening to you guys. Y'all are right on target. And it just bothers me that – and maybe these guys can do that. Maybe they can go from zero intensity to mega intensity against the Bucks in, in Cincinnati. And if they do, you just you know, ain't going to be a bigger cheerer than me. But it, it's scary right now because I haven't seen them or heard them by either you, or Isaiah, or anybody else that's seen them practice against Denver. And we've all witnessed the uh, Denver uh, preseason game. I, I, I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on that intensity to pick up. I'm, I'm, it has to. It Nate, has to pick Nate up. Is, is this the reason why you're on the road right, right. now to oh, go watch you, just, man, just almost, practice, Nate? Y'all started back driving. Y'all started talking. I almost started Nate. back driving, but I'm in such a bad area. No, but, Nate, tell, tell the people why you're going to L.A. to watch so just, to just, hey, just practice. To the left guard. But, Nate, you tell them you don't, you don't, you're not even going to the game, Nate. You're just going no. for practice. Tell them, tell them why. Because I want to go, go see the intensity because they have a, a defense better than Denver's on paper. They have an offense better than Denver's on paper. You know, and the quarterbacks are probably even. So what I'm trying to get here is, and I need to go see this left guard. I need to say, son, you got to get a sense of urgency. You, you, you're not going to throw, throw these guys with just your upper body strength without the use of your legs or the right hand, right hand placement. I just want to tell him that, so, man, you don't know me. I know you. You ain't never seen me, but I've seen you. How many hours, Nate? This, uh, Twenty hours. It don't matter, man. I've been for this. But, that, but, 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 but no shit. <laughs> Nate's in his Nate's, happy place right now. No, but hey, but Nate, this is serious. Yeah. Nate is driving twenty plus hours to go watch the Cowboys practice. He don't care about the game. No. To go watch them practice, and that so that he can put a word in these guys' ear because he cares that much. Twenty they hours. Gotta know. Nate, what is it, what are you looking for? I mean, what is going to be a sign that you see this this week uh, versus the charges that tells you, okay, look, we all right. Maybe that was premature, or uh oh, yeah, we might be in a yeah. little bit of trouble. It ain't gonna switch for me, fellas. It's gonna be tempo, yeah. and consistency. And yes, you got to cut down on the penalties. But I agree with Jesse. I agree with Isaiah. First preseason game, you can't chop their heads off. But what the left guard and the left tackle. They made their coaches look bad because you are supposed to be a little bit better than three holdings and two holdings consecutively. Left tackle, three holdings, left guard, two. That's five, that's five holdings, man. That 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 ain't even supposed to happen in the preseason, regular season, or no time. And we got two practices coming up here in Los Angeles: the Cowboys versus the Chargers, and game on Saturday. You're on the call. 
on the call. And I, Nate and I will both be at practice. Gonna be at I'll practice. Be at practice tomorrow. Nate be at practice tomorrow. Oh, you gonna be that man? I changed my flight. Nate is important. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'm, I'm, it's I'm practice. Stop back driving. Make sure I don't. I don't miss nothing. I gotta stop back driving. I may cut off y'all. <laughs> well, we're going to take our first break here on Hanging with the Bulls. Stay with us. We're going to talk about the guys that we picked last week and what we thought of their performance right here on Hanging with the Boys. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pregame sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and Cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel? Attend the best tailgate party in Texas? Tour the star and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls, with Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Attention Cowboys fans looking for the best shave of your life. There's a new official razor of the Dallas Cowboys, Shave Logic. Imagine not having to buy blades as often and getting more smooth shaves than your old razor, guaranteed or your money back. After more than 10 years of research and over 150 company patents, ShaveLogic is proud to offer Cowboys fans a special offer. For a limited time, visit ShaveLogic.com and get a free $10 gift card with your purchase. Go to ShaveLogic.com now for more smooth shaves guaranteed. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Back in action here at the SWBC oh. Mortgage Studio. <laughs> Back in action here at the SWBC Mortgage Studio. This is Hanging with the Boys. <laughs> Nate Newton is on the line. Jesse Holly and Isaiah Stanbeck are in studio with me. I'm Heckman Harrison. And, man, these guys, man, I don't know why I got to go through this. Why, man? When I'm going to be a part of the club, man? That's all I want to know, man. Why I keep giving it to me like that, man? These people got to need to know what I'm going through up here. You know? But, guys, when we talked last... We were talking about players that we were looking for uh, to show up and show out. Uh, guys that you need to see, that obviously those second, third string guys that you were looking to make an impact. Mine was Nation Wright. And I will say mm. that Nation Wright had a, eh. he had a good night, man. He just, had just little, little things. Yeah, little, little things. things. It, started out, it started out good, and then it just kind of, as it went. You know why? You know why? It seemed like he was pressing. No, he was playing really well. And then he got the one holding call. Yeah, he got the one holding call, and that immediately he was like, he got his hand slapped, and he was like, "Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't do what I was doing." And then he just lost it because now he was second guessing himself. First part of the game, he was playing really well, coming up, playing physical, had his hands all over Cavs, was playing good defense. As soon as he got that holding penalty, just because he just got a little bit too sticky with his hands, right, a little bit too long, right. After that, he second guessed everything that he did, and that's when he got himself in trouble. But the natural state of Nation Wright, loved it. Nate, who was your player that you uh, were, were looking forward to seeing, and, and what did you think about his his performance? Uh, you know, Brandon Smith, he got in late in the game, the wide receiver, Brandon Smith, and then and he caught a nice little pass, and another, I think another one then. But my left guard was was the guy I was hoping that could just go in and, and make, you know, have a solid game, and he struggled, and ball struggled. So that, that kind of knocked me out of the box. I had somebody defensively, but I forgot who it was besides Nation. Jesse, who's your guy? I don't remember. You don't remember? Well, just pick somebody and tell me what you thought about what he did. Uh, you know, I was, I was, I was disappointed in Kelvin Joseph. Hmm. Say it, say it, Nate. He's oh, I ain't going. He don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Boss man, fact. <laughs> As a guy who was a second round pick. Hmm. 
I expect more. I need more from you. Like, you should be in the conversation of the rotation of those first-string guys. And you're showing you're showing to be in the conversation of guys who are on the bubble. And to me, that that just doesn't – and that nothing to do with off-the-field stuff. I'm talking about strictly on-the-field stuff. It does matter, though. The off the field stuff does matter. No, it's it's no. Now you now now it's coming into conversation. Come, yes, right. Facts. When guy when the, when those coaches are sitting there, they're like, man, is it worth it? Is it worth it? See, teams will tolerate when you got talent. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always say that. I T-T. always say I, I always say tolerance versus talent. When you talented, oh, they gonna put up with some stuff. When you, when you got that dog in you, you them, oh, they gonna put up with some stuff. But the moment you don't have it anymore. Yeah, we're not putting up with that. And so unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It's a distraction. <laughs> what used to be passion is now a distraction. What used to be something that, you know, we're we're overblowing has now become the topic of the discussion. offsides penalty. You on can't the kick. have that. Yeah. You can't because in a game, you literally had him miss a field goal. Offsides, he makes it. It's those little things in the game. It, they, so you add all that stuff together. So for me, you know, Kelvin Joseph wasn't a bright spot, um, and I just I, I he's coming to a point. It's coming to a head that you know, what is he going to be? I know it's year two, but what is he going to be for this team? You're not in the conversation right now of being, um, what's the kid number thirty? Bland. Bland. Yeah. Bland said, "Uh, Boy, uh, uh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. I know, I know, I might not have been in that discussion, but I'm in it now." I'll I know be, you. I'll be your nickel. Yeah, I know you might have three other guys <laughs> over here, but you ain't. But put me in that. Put me in that rotation because I want to be a part of this five six man rotation that you're gonna have on on game day every single week. Did you see that boy coming up and hitting? Yeah. Oh yeah. No thirty, and his name is not. I, I it's probably, not Brown. Hey, that, that was, right. That was, I said his name a lot. I'm. I'm sorry if I said it too much, but I was. I was impressed. I yeah. was really impressed, and I hadn't been impressed in practice. Would you say Bland was that player that that you got it and you saw and he was oh like, oh, he popped, he, he popped for you. He popped yeah. for me. I mean, he definitely popped for me simply because of the fact I, you know, I know DQ and I know his philosophy and you have to be a willing and capable cor- t- willing and capable tackler at the cornerback position in his defense because mm. he wants to be so aggressive up front that if teams are going to want to run, they're going to run around it to the outside. And when they run it to the outside, you got to have guys that are willing to step up slip a block by the receiver, come up and go outside shoulder and drive through the dog on knee of the receiver and the running back, whoever it is that's coming out his way, whether it's a screen or a run play. And he came up and he was laying hat. And then he covered. Right. <laughs> I'm, I covers what I do, but if we need some run support, I'll do that too. Yeah. Without hesitation. So you find your way on the roster, baby. No, I love to see that. But also, man, Neville Gallimore. Yeah. Beast. Yeah. Neville Gallimore. Him and Hill. Him and Hill now. I think that was my guy. I think I think I said I think I said I said defensive front. So I was like Osa and Neville. Yeah. Hey. That's what boom. Gallimore I won. and Hill. I won. I tossed it over. That Thank combo. You. I appreciate it. <laughs> that combo. Right there. I appreciate that. Thank you. That was my guy. <laughs> Neville Gallimore. Yeah. Those two dudes. Yeah. Hill and Gallimore. That's a that's a mean little combo. Did you say Hill? Tristan Hill? Tristan Hill had a good game, too. Okay. It didn't show up in the stat sheet, but if you watch him play, those guys are getting vertical. Big Nate, what do you think about Tristan? Yeah, they, I'm, I'm, I'm watching them, man. I just – I just – I just didn't even – you know, the defense, I'm not worried about it. They, I think they played well. They had some few busts. Uh, we we got to work on our young corners. See, what, what happened to Nation Wright, you can say, well, oh, yeah, I understand. Okay, yeah, we can – we can correct that, but what happened on offense? How do you correct that? Yeah, I'd love to see uh, Tristan Hill and the job that he's doing. I mean, he's going about his business very quietly. Is it too late for Tristan Hill? I don't think so. Is it too little too late for Tristan Hill? When you think not about talking to the coaching staff. Like, when you, like when like you think him. about that group up front, I'm just asking. I'm not, oh, I'm, deep. I'm not, it's a deep group. I'm not yeah. projecting. That's probably the deepest group. Yes, it is. On this football team, he's that got, defensive he's gonna line. Have, he's going to have to have a heck of a two weeks. So between, like I said, b- between Neville and between, um, uh, they love Golston um, and, and Carlos Watkins. Watkins. I mean, th- that's a deep group. Osa, o- Osa, Osa, Bo, all them guys. Bo- Bo- they got Ridgeway. Ridgeway, they, they drafted. And, you know, Tristan's been here for a while, and that's the thing. Sometimes you get a guy who's been here for a while, and you start yep. saying, 
is he is he just who he is right now? Is he not going to get any better? There's, Should I go with these other guys who who I think have a higher ceiling? There's four linemen you're going to have to cut that you like. Mm. Is Tristan Hill one of them? We got to find out. We got two weeks. We'll find out. No, I mean, can you repurpose Tristan Hill? I, I don't mean, think it's a repurpose. I just think that he's just had a span of bad luck. And he's having an opportunity to go show what he's capable of. I mean, I had a ton of injuries, right? I like yeah. to I like to think that when nah, I, when I got nah, back. Nah, he ain't had no he ain't had no bad luck. <laughs> what he what, what he what he done ran into is a coach that ain't playing ain't, ain't ain't caring about whether you want to be babied or not. His early he, on, he had some maturity. It it was yeah yeah. He, you know, that, then you couple you that know, with the injuries, yeah, and then you couple that with man. the draft pick position. Bad combo. Go ahead, Nate. Bruh, that young man. Now, when they coach, say, man, don't worry about it. Like y'all was talking about earlier with Belichick and with Jimmy John. Don't worry about it. You can't practice. Okay. He see that now. Uh, you, oh, you, you got a little sprain today? Uh, okay. Don't worry about it. Bohan and gone in there. Ridge where you need some rep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dave. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can get ignored real quick right about now. It's, it's only two positions or three positions where there's real combative, uh, things going on. That's your safeties, that's your D-line, and that's your wide receivers. Everyone else, they kind of got it already picked out. They want to play some games, but they already got it kind of picked out how they're going to do it. Did anybody watch Ridgeway? No. He looked, I don't know if he was tired or he was having bad technique. I'm just, I'm just going to lean on the tired. Um, he was playing very vertical. Yeah. Could that be a part of the injury? He got injured that week he in did, practice. He did. He, he limped off the field. I watched him. And, you know, and showing a little bit of toughness, trying to go out there and compete. Now, sometimes that may hurt you. Yeah. Because you if you're, well. you don't perform well. So. I, I expected him to be more of a stopper. And he was, from what I saw, from the plays that I did pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, I didn't him. see anything that popped, yeah. basically, he, he, for he him. Was standing up and kind mm-hmm. of moved around. It was kind of, um, I don't, no, I'm not even going to say it. Nope. Yeah. It just, he, he, I want to see the next game. Uh, and. Also, the linebacker position, guys like Store Jackson. I know, you know, like the, the he did good. He did really well. Yep, yep. Um, had a tackle for a loss, six tackles, I believe. They were aggressive. And these are guys that are really trying to compete. Also, number Devin fifty, Harper. Devin Harper. Man, he's fast. He can, it, it can move uh, yeah, no, for for a linebacker, and that's that's a position that obviously you talked about it. Uh, that needing some more depth at the linebacker position. I think you. Obviously, you need a couple more weeks to see where these guys are, but they did some really good things in the preseason. They, the the training staff decided, along with the coaches, to choose health over reps for Jabril Cox. They, they, they took the safe route. He didn't touch it. He was not suited up. Interesting to see what happens this week. Big Nate? I tell y'all what. It ain't no month no more. It ain't no five weeks no more. This thing about to happen quick. After, after next week, you know, it's, it's either do or die. It's do or die right now for a bunch of guys. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, it's do or die. They just cut this some guys. Is, yeah, they did. They got short. Well, and, and yeah, you also did. you look at it when you, when you talk about preparing for week one, right? After this week, the whole give young guys opportunities. That's kind of going to stop, because I got two weeks left to get the guys who are going to be there in September against the Bucks. I got a question for you. Yes. Okay. We both we we've been there. Week two of three in the preseason. Do you have to, if you're on the if you're on the edge you know on the bubble type of player right we like we're mentioning some guys. Do you have to make the team in this game? Yes. That's how important this this Saturday week in practice third and game, this game third okay. game eh. My, their co- most coaches' mindsets are already made up. I mean, would you agree? Would you agree, Nate? Game two. Man, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they, they, they will be, they will be all over. Slow down, man. I, I, these two practices in this preseason game, they be like, why is, why is Nate Sean right in the game in the fourth <laughs> quarter, Coach? I'm trying to show you. Yeah, I want to be a part of this. Yeah, you, uh, those guys who are, the who, on. those guys who are on that bubble, who are trying to make this roster, you literally have one week. This is the week. This week in this yeah. playoff game, because next week, I'm getting. I'm. I'm next week is our. our your, your mind's on the next game. On the, on the first game. Yeah. Next week, we're, we we are we are we are we are pretty much 
set. There's, yeah. I, I brought that up, hey, right? Because there's no more four weeks. Mm-mm. Yeah, it is. There's no more. There's no more four weeks. So, I would imagine some starters are going to play in this game. I would like to hope that some starters are going to play in this game because other teams, like Kansas City, played some of their guys in in the first preseason game, and they'll probably play a little bit more mm-hmm. just to get their conditioning right, and then they're off. Right for the next game and a half, they're not touching the field. So if that, so it, let's just assume that they're that the Cowboys are going to take that approach. That's less reps for these guys to make it for these guys to make these coaches' minds up with their play because that third game, which is now the last game, is really ridden off unless you just do something freaking amazing that carries over from the second week. It just can't show up in week three. Mm-hmm. You have to do something in week one, week two, and then in three, week three is just confirmation. These guys have, like DJ said, you got a ball this week in practice because it's going to be very competitive. Two padded practices, to my understanding, mm-hmm. against the Chargers, and then you got a ball in the preseason game. So these guys really got three games this week for, for some of these younger guys. And you talk about the five cuts that the Cowboys made getting down from 90 to 85, Ryan Nall, uh, Ty Freifogel, Ian Bunting, uh, Kyron Brown. Hey, I believe we brought him over from the Jets. He actually made some plays. Like yeah, he did. Uh, but I think that may be a byproduct of what you see Deron Bland doing. And also Austin Falu. I'm sure I, I butchered that. But those are the five cuts uh, that were made. But before we go to break, I got to ask you real quick, guys. Backup, backup quarterback. Don't 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 turn. Don't do that. Don't don't, don't don't do that. The best thing the best thing that happened to Will Greer was his growing. Not, it was his growing. Was his growing. So you're saying the best thing that happened to him was not playing. One hundred percent. How in the hell do you improve your position by not playing? And more when we come back from the break. <laughs> <laughs> you, what? Because you got a chance to see that guy who was in front of you or alongside of you to competing with to have a full on opportunity to show again it goes back to what i said about tristan hill he is what he is cooper rush is what he is that, that that's just that's just what it and it was on display again right that but ain't go, that that ain't that ain't that ain't it no grace for cooper rush what, at all what, what more we, well i'm just saying you've seen him in a game you've seen him yeah, operate and give get you a victory can, nate come on can, help me can, out here I, please nate can I, can I give you some information but what about what you talking about the, you, you when you mentioned backup quarterbacks i gotta turn my phone off what did you say <laughs> <laughs> what was your what were your thoughts on the backup quarterback uh ben denucci and cooper rush he threw a nice ball to my boy brandon smith so uh zeus told me they should hide him on the practice squad for a second year Brandon Smith. That's about the only thing they, the backup quarterback did for me. I, I can tell you this, and I'll let you go to break, Heck. Will Greer was on the sideline pregame. And the guys were warming up. The individuals that were coming up and having conversations with Will Greer are, Thank you. are not individuals that come up and talk to a third string quarterback. Thank you. So this second segment was brought to you by (laughs) Blockchain.com. We're going to take our last break, and we'll be back with more Hanging with the Boys. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go... They go, what was it? They go, you go? (laughs) And if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Not available in every state, based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Hey, Cowboys fans, if you're thinking about attending a game this season, visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. 
stay at the team hotel, have dinner with a Cowboys legend, and experience AT&T Stadium's exclusive VIP Owners Club. Also, tour the star, get autographs from your favorite players, and talk X's and O's with me, Mickey Spagnola. The official travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys will take care of all your travel needs. Visit CowboysTravel.com. With Smoothie King's original angel food and new angel food slim without added sugar, you no longer have to choose between treating yourself and hitting your goals this summer. You don't have to choose between great taste and feeling great. Because at Smoothie King, every blend is made with whole fruits and no syrups, so you can satisfy your cravings without compromise. The only choice you will need to make is which one is best for you. Try our classic angel food or the new angel food slim, blended without added sugar. Smoothie King, rule the day. Back to hanging with the boys. Come watch the Cowboys practice during training camp at the Star, presented by American Airlines. Open practice will take place in back-to-back nights at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Join us for Cowboy Night on Tuesday, August 23rd, starting at 4 p.m. in open practice on Wednesday, August 24th at 6 p.m. For more info, visit the Star in Frisco.com. Back in action here at the SWBC Mortgage Studios. Isaiah stand back. Jesse Holly and Nate Newton sitting in his car. Man, I'm telling you, Nate is the happiest man I've ever seen in America driving. I hate to drive. But Nate, they get on 20 hours like it ain't nothing and gone and back for practice. <laughs> for practice. This man doing this for practice. Nate. Yeah, Allen Iverson wasn't like you that about nothing. <laughs> Nobody can ever question Nate's commitment to this. To no, this no, hey, no. Hey, Nate, do you have certain I, – I was thinking about this, and I probably should have kept this to myself, but do you have certain bathrooms on these trips? Like when you go to Mexico, like that's your – that's a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have man, certain uh, ones I that you're like, you know what? QT. QT, QT uh, okay. Because I, I, I know you ain't gonna, you, you get a little hungry on the road, so you probably going <laughs> to grab a taquito or two. Them taquitos don't sit too well with you from the gas station. You know what I mean? You 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 you, you let that thing go in yeah. these random these. Random. But have you ever been into a Bucky's bathroom? Amazing. Yeah. The Bucky's is, is Bucky's is top of the line. Like how do they do that? Man, how do they keep them so clean? The whole staff they, dedicated they, to it. Including their prices. They, so, you gonna pay for that clean bathroom? So let me let me hit y'all to a little game. If you're ever in a Nate situation, okay, and you're driving long ways. Because every place doesn't have a Bucky's. Like, that's a that's a Texas thing, right? Right. That's a Texas thing so, and a few other states starting to adopt. Here's what you have to remember. When you're driving on the road and you have to go to number two, find a hotel. Because hotels, yeah. their guest bathrooms in the lobby, they're graded on that. That lobby appearance, yeah. hotels are graded on that. Yes. So, they're, so they're, they're, every day. they're always going to keep a clean Bathroom now. Now, if you at the if you at the you know the hotel, that's gonna be, that's, that's a whole little different story. But anybody who has a regular hotel, the don't stop in right. Their don't bathrooms they're they're rated on those bathrooms. So that that whole right. appearance. That's a good game. Secondly, yeah. thing. Secondly, if you're hungry, stop at the hotel again in the morning for breakfast. Those who have the continental breakfasts in the morning. Now, don't go in there asking a bunch of questions. Walk in there like you stay there. They're not like going to question you. Tonight. They're not going to question you. Walk into the morning, go in there, get you some of that bacon, get your bowl of cereal, muffin, some juice, and get back on the road free of charge. I just saved you about 10, 15 bucks every send time you get on the J- road. I mean, send that to, his, uh, to your foundation. Tell them the foundation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you ever <laughs> use the bathroom, find hotels. Those bathrooms will always be clean <laughs> in the lobby. Secondly, if you're driving throughout the night, and you, it's, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning till that 10 o'clock time frame, just walk into the hotel, walk right in like you stayed there last night, go in there and get breakfast. Trust me, I do it all the time. And the one last thing is, if you're ever going to, on a trip and you don't want to pay airport parking, yeah, find the nearest hotel to the airport. Park your car there, and if you really smooth with it, get on the hotel. Get shuttle. on the hotel show. <laughs> I do it all the time. When I, Jesse, when I fly out of when I fly out of the DFW, <laughs> when I fly not sorry when I fly to Love, I always go. What is that? That's the the the, the double tree. Yeah. Uh, the double tree is right there. There's another one. There's an NBC Suites. It's like right on around the corner off, off Northwest Highway. 
I park there. I walk in and say, hey, what time is the shuttle going to the airport? And they're like, oh, we got one going in 15 minutes. All right, cool. I'll be outside. I jump on the shuttle, go to the airport. I never pay for parking. Game. Man, the, the tow. Wait to tell everybody, Jessica. They going to tag you. Now. They going to tell you the, the towing bill yeah, going to go up across, t- across Dallas. Is there a 6'3 African-American male rock yeah. around here with Jan? <laughs> you yeah. know, get me flagged. <laughs> <laughs> And like, hey, he, you stole breakfast. He's like, hey, I wasn't even here. He's like, Jesse, was you That's in? why you was asking me when I'm flying yeah, out. Yeah, like, was well, you in Austin last week? Yeah, I was. Man, they thought it was me. Boy, yeah. and as much as my kids eat, boy, they go ask us, did you stay here last night? They go ask <laughs> your car. Take like, your key card, sir. Just I'm telling you. Walk in there. Man, before we get out of here, I got to ask you guys about separation. Separation. Was there any players that you saw on Saturday that's battling? Uh, for a position that you saw, hey, this guy is, is creating a little separation between himself and the next guy on that depth chart. Was there anybody that you noticed? And, Nate, I'm going to start with you uh, before you get out of here. Was there anybody to, uh, that you put your eyes on and you said, hey, that, that's our guy? We will always say the same guy, number 30, yep. the new number 30, Deron Bland. It's, it's that guy. He, he, he shocked the nation, bro. I mean, it, yeah. it's some teams now. Like, looking like, hey, y'all look deep in corner. Can you can you spare? <laughs> He's <Right>. that guy. <laughs> he spare square. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jess? Man, uh, Ferguson, he he put himself in yes. the conversation. Yes. Now I'm not saying he's going to start over Dalton Schultz, but he put himself in the conversation of, Great. hey guys, 53. I you know, and now I, I will I will watch going forward what he does on special teams. Because that's how he's going to be able to get into that game day situation, being able to be a special teams guy, and maybe some of those roles where you're looking for a fullback-ish type, you know, guy or guy who maybe block a little bit better than uh, uh, than Schultz. But I think Ferguson did a lot with showing his route running ability uh, in the game last week. Yeah, he was he was definitely a guy for me. What about you, Zay? Uh, aside from the guys that you guys have already mentioned, Aviant Collins. Aviant, I like Aviant right Aviant tackle. Collins. Right tackle. Yeah. Right tackle, I felt like he had a good game. He had one penalty the entire game, but uh, he, he – Well, way to go. Yeah, well, way he, to go. Hey, I know, right? I but, out, of eight, out of 18,000 penalties, he got the one. Yeah, okay, he got the one. Go. But he was physical, Nate, and I was watching yeah. him. He was chasing cats down after the play, trying to finish dudes right. on the ground, mm-hmm. five, six, seven yards down the field, walking okay. back to the huffle huddle, wolfing that cats. Going. He had the attitude and the execution that you would like to see from your offensive line. So okay, I don't please. know if I don't know if he can swing from left tackle to right tackle. However, I liked it. He showed me that he was a dog. And he's not a rookie. He's a veteran cat, right? He's been okay. around the block a couple times. So he knows. Right. And I think he knew that well let's go's most likely not going to play this year, right? I know they haven't released anything yet, but I've had the injury he's had. He ain't playing at that position with that, okay? And then right. and then also Josh Ball has been playing like straight Yes. Oh, seaweed, yeah. okay, the last few weeks. And I don't see that improvement. So he's like, opportunity. Yeah. And he went out there and he approached that preseason game like it was a regular season game. Go back and right. watch the film. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Connor yeah. McGovern is a right guard. Yeah. Nate? Keep... Connor is your left guard right now. I know he is. No, no, I know. No, no, I know he's the left guard. I'm just saying the way that his his performance, what he's doing, is solidifying himself and creating that separation. You're going to play. You're going to try and find a way. Swing guard. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. You do know who our right guard is, right? No, I know exactly oh, who our right oh, guard so I'm, is. Okay, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm second. I was no, like, wait. No, no, I know. It's, I like he ain't make that jump. Like no, he I'm did sorry, not yeah, make that ready. jump. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. The Kool Aid is not that yeah, good today. No, I was like, that's vodka. That ain't Kool Aid. <laughs> no, that's, that ain't where I'm going. That's absolute. Um, that's no. something that's going. I'm saying with the with the performance that's happening. We're saying that Cooper Rush by his performance, I got you. Is giving you those vibes that Greer is what he is, and then you see him go over it right guard okay in Oof. his performance i'm Come sorry on, do me like no, that, i'm Jess. sorry i know because i was like wait what is he talking about? Uh-uh. i'm sorry i apologize that's my fault separation yeah. i'm sorry yeah he uh, he, 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 he already the swing guard <laughs> mm-hmm. now 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 it's up to you it's up to your left your, the rookie left guard because like i said this is the week this is a very very crucial week yes because they can't take that in the next week time we we going back and forth because if you're going to be in a, in a push for a playoff spot, because everybody got better, in the NFC, 
from top to bottom, everybody got better. And one thing I keep remind uh, Isaiah keep reminding me of. It seems like everybody in the NFC East went out and got a, a monster defensive lineman. Okay, <laughs> so we better solidify this offensive line. Yeah, and that's the separation I'm talking about. You know, we yeah. you, you said it, Nate, at the, in the first segment that if if you go out there with the ones and you have Dak on the field, you're going to have to go with Connor McGovern at left guard. You trust yeah. him. You you trust him, yeah. and you're not you're not in a position, especially with the way that you see the rookie performing, that you're going to leave him out there. Special this week. If he do something special this week, I'm uh, you know, but it got to be special, man. It's got to be special because he didn't know all his plays either. And that is the first thing that gets you. Ask the fellas you sitting there with. If you not, if you don't want to be on the field, you can have a couple of those uh, not knowing where to go plays. Jesse, I'm not saying that Connor McGovern is going to yeah, uh, see. No, we that demand. Hard. He's, not, he's not the man. But you stop that. All right, come on, man. I, 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 I was about to be like, that's got to be. Shot, 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 shot. The, 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 the hand sanitizer bottle looking a little light right now. <laughs> you play quarterback, uh, Isaiah. Facts. You don't, if, if I'm up there, I don't know who to block. And, and you got another guy that can halfway. He know who to block, and he may not be the best. Listen, yep. but give the Listen guy, here. Who do you want playing? I, I told Coach Willingham that one time. I said, get this joker up out of here. <laughs> Yeah. He said, we ain't so got I nobody mean, else. I said, get him in. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't know who to block, man. That's a killing for your quarterback. And you're talking about that three-step drop where he had his head looking to the left yeah. and gave somebody up to the inside. Yes. Man, before we get out of here, I want to make sure that I send condolences out to Mr. Calvin Hill. Uh, yes. Yeah. And and yes. His loss of his of his wife, um, and obviously you know uh, Calvin Hill's a great man. His family is great family. If you know them, Grant Hill is his son. Uh, just really um, you know sad uh, to see, but I definitely want to send my condolences uh, out to the Hill family. Um, but guys, you know, look, this has been another one, a great uh, show. Nate, safe travels. Yeah. Man. Safe travels. Yeah, yeah, Find man. you a good bathroom. Uh, the hotel, you know. No, nah, no, nah, you know, I, I don't, I don't do like Jess because they'll notice me. Like this big fella, this big fella for the tab out buffet bar. All right, Nate. Well, well, well let All us know how it go. Keep us posted on where you are, Nate. Man, be safe All out right. there. And for everybody that's been rocking with us for this entire hour, we appreciate it. We'll be back on Thursday with more hanging with the boys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!